Welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm gonna be walking through just how to set up and run Input Shaper and Clipper. And this all, this is applicable to pretty much any printer that's running Clipper, and uh, if you wanna get ghosting and ringing out of your prints. Um, this is also part of my Big Tree Tech series video, so uh, I, will be pr I will be demonstrating this on my Core XY. All right, so after a lot of tune fine tuning, I finally got the printer with the Big Tree Tech board printing where I want it to, to be in. Pretty much how it was before. Um, it is pretty amazing how much time it takes to get things set up with firmware, especially when you're doing a printer from scratch. And resonance compensation is one of the main reasons I wanted to go with Clipper on this board. So as you can see here in the picture, we're going to run this um, test. And what it does is it removes this ghosting. So it's a software technique to basically compensate for any resonance that you have in your frame. Um, I'm going to be going through all the steps here. Uh, that are listed below. I'm not going to get into a ton of detail, but I will walk through it briefly. And the link for this will be in the description. Um, but th basically what we're going to need to do is go into Clipper and follow the instructions here. And we're ultimately going to be printing this tower here. So this is a, actually a miniature version of the one that they have linked. It's a 70 millimeter version. It, do it basically does the same thing. Um, it's just a smaller size print. But on the back you see an X and a Y. This will help you know what to change in your settings. In order to get started with input shape or tuning, you're going to need to open up your printer configuration file on Clipper, and then you're going to need to set your max Excel, max Excel to D cell, and square corner velocity, uh, just like I have shown here. After doing that, go ahead and save and restart firmware. In this step, you need to go ahead and run the set pressure advance, advance equals zero. And we also need to set this tuning tower command. It's a pretty long command, so I recommend copying and pasting it uh, just from the website. This command is going to steadily increase the acceleration and velocity of the printer while you're going. At this point, you're going to need to go into your slicer and load your ghosting tower. And make sure that on the speeds you have at least 80 millimeters per second for speed. You could go a little bit higher, but you, wanna, you want something at least 80. So on my printer, 80 seems to make sense and it's sufficient for tuning. And then go ahead and export your file. And here you can see that it's putting the 70 millimeter ghosting tower now. You can already see there's a fair amount of ghosting already visible. So um, I definitely, I'm gonna definitely have to put on some resonance compensation. After a section of layers, these parameters are updated through that tuning tower command that we ran earlier. So. Right now I'm up to about 2,500 max acceleration. Something as I take a step back, you can kind of see the frame, you know, you can see it like physically resonating or shaking a little bit. So that's, you know, this is a pretty beefy machine too. This is 3030 extrusion, but uh, you can kind of see that the roll of filament is uh, shaking a little bit. So that's really what we're trying to, you know, to tune out because all that shaking is, is what's going to be causing the ghosting, or at least contributing to it, not to mention the head itself. So this Hamera head is actually pretty heavy. Okay, because of the where I'm at right now with the amount of shaking and the resonance is pretty obvious, uh, I don't really see a need to continue going anymore. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, is stop the print, and then I'm just going to use what I have and uh, go ahead and try to tune it from there. Except you're just going to mark your oscillations. You're going to put a couple lines there. So what I did was I marked the first one and then the last one. It was kind of hard to see in the light. Um, this one had a lot uh, more oscillations. So this is actually the, technically the Y. But what you're going to do when you change it, so the reverse side, you're going to count this and you're going to, whatever you end up counting and doing kind of the formula, you're going to apply this to the X axis and apply this to the Y. So what I did here is I took my uh, calipers and I measured between these two lines and I came up with 9.2 millimeters. Did the same thing here and I came up with 19.6 millimeters. You can really see a lot of ghosting on there. All the steps that I went through are on the resonance compensation page of the Clipper site. So you definitely want to read through this and, you know, especially if you have questions, you want to measure things up just like it's outlined here. And then you're going to count the oscillations and then ultimately that's going to be used to do your calculation for your values. And the number that I came up with when I counted was nine between those two lines and four oscillations between those two. 
Okay, so when I went ahead and did the math, um, I wrote it down in my OneNote here and calculated it. So my X is calculated at 38.57 hertz and my Y at 36.52 hertz. And you can see basically what you're gonna do is take your print speed, which mine was 84 millimeters per second, and these are the number of oscillations, and then you're gonna divide that by the distance that you measure those oscillations. All right, all that's left to do now is to transfer those values over into a section called Input Shaper, and you do your Shaper Frequency X for the X value and the Shaper Frequency Y for the Y value. After that, we're just gonna save and restart the firmware, and we're gonna try to print a test. Now that I have my new Input Shaper settings saved into my printer config file, I'm just going to simply rerun the same uh, ghosting tower, but I'm not going to run any of those other commands in Clipper. All right, so after running the test, you can see the new uh, print after doing input shapers here. This is the one with in, without input shaper when I did the tuning tower. So it's definitely looking a lot better. You don't really see the ghosting, certainly not as pronounced as what you saw here. You can really see side by side that there's a, a pretty significant improvement. The Y on this, this one originally wasn't all that bad, but you can definitely see it. So as things went up, the acceleration increased and the speed increased. So down here, I ran it pretty much at the same acceleration speed as up here. So All right, well, I hope this video series has been helpful for you. And uh, if you're considering, you know, running Input Shaper, Clipper, I think you can't go wrong. You can see some of the initial results that I'm getting. I still could probably do some more tuning and, and get it even better, but quite happy with it. Uh, if you're considering the Big Tree Tech Octopus board, I think it's a great buy. When you look at other boards on the market, you're you're really not paying a whole lot more. Um, I think this board would be great for larger printers, especially if you're considering, um, you know, maybe more than one extruder or or doing a, like a Voron 2.4 where you have extra motors to do the bed leveling and things like that. So for anything where you need more than four or five motors, it seems like a really good idea. Even if you're not sure, I mean, you're only going to spend maybe another $10, $15 over some of the other cheaper boards that are in the $30 to $40 range. So it, it seems like a really high quality board. It's got separate power rails. Uh, it's got many expansion ports and it, just the quality of components seem to be pretty good. So I, it's definitely a buy. And like I said, I'm, I'm going to most likely buy another one. All right. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully this has been helpful for you.